Hey guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to the video that we always wait for all the content creators to make and that is the best books that I read in 2022. As usual, I'm always late to the party, but you know what they say, better late than never. <laughs> I have a huge pile of books that I want to talk about today and I'm trying to hold them all together. It's a big pile. I don't want to drop it. <laughs> also a huge shout out to my roommate who is allowing me to film in her room. She even suggested it herself. And I was like, the lighting is amazing here. So I was like, let's take her up on that opportunity. Let's first start off this video by looking at my reading stats. Not only do I use Goodreads, but I also use Storygraph because they have a way more like accurate description of how you can like rate your books. And you can really see whether a book is like fast paced, slow paced. You can see all the different Different moods that you have been reading over the past year. It's very interesting and a lot more informative than Goodreads. So let's have a look at that together, I guess. In total, I read 35 books, which was exactly my goal of what I wanted to reach. On Goodreads, it is 36 because I added a school book because that's also like a book that I just completely read. And I was like, that also counts towards my goal, okay? Like social psychology is in this brain right now. And I want the validation for it as well on Goodreads. So if you take that book out, 35 books, 12,000, and 759 pages. My moods are everywhere, which uh, is very <laughs> reminiscent of um, everyday life. And as you can see, I only read fast and medium paced books. It's just because I like for things to move on and to happen. And I don't know when it's super, super slow, the beauty of the writing style needs to make up for it. And I never know what my preferred writing style is. <laughs> So I do feel like I have been reading some bigger books overall, and you can definitely see that in my page number pie chart. So 70% of the books that I read are between 300 and 500 pages. And I definitely read three books that are like above the 500 page mark, which I mean, it's just three, but that's still more than zero. So patting myself on the shoulder for that. I mean, 94% of the books were fiction. I just like to escape to different worlds and different people instead of focusing on real life sometimes. And yeah, the genres are also all quite different, mostly young adult and contemporaries. Romance is actually really quite high. It's my number three, which I would not expect. <laughs> and I also really like that chart of all the different waves, like how you can see that my reading has been going over the past year. And I don't know why, but I did not read any books almost in July. I don't know what happened there because usually during the summer times I read the most, but I feel like this summer, maybe I was just way too much in my feels and I just could not focus on a book at all. And what did I do in July? I don't even remember. <laughs> oh wait, I forgot one big stat that I of course wanted to share as well. My average rating, like my average review is a 3.5 out of five stars, which is I think the lowest average rating in a long time. And I do have to say, even though I did read a lot based on just my mood, and I kind of like went with the flow. I had a lot of books that were quite disappointing and um, that I expected more from or that I expected to love because they were written by authors that I had previously been obsessed with. I'm gonna make a whole video on the worst books that I read in 2022 as well. So I will kind of like save my opinions on those books for that video. And with that being out of the way, I only rated, I think two books a five star rating. I did not find a lot of new favorites this year and I wish that I had more five star reads. So let's hope and pray for that in 2023. The order that I'm gonna go in is I'm gonna start with my least favorite of all the favorites. So it was still a good one. And let's just start, I guess. And that is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And this book would have been way higher up on the list if it weren't for the bitter aftertaste that book two and three left in my mouth. Honestly, I had the best time whilst reading this first book in a like murder mystery puzzle book series, I guess. Basically, if you have watched Knives Out, I feel like that movie perfectly describes the vibe that you're looking for and that this book is giving you. If you've been living under a rock, I will tell you what the synopsis of this book is about. So we follow our main character, Avery, and she basically has nothing. Her sister is the only person who's looking out for her right now. Her mom passed away. Her 
dad is not in the picture. And all of a sudden she inherits billions. I want to say millions, but I think it's billions from this billionaire who has a ton of family that could have inherited his money, but he chose for them not to. The only thing that she has to stick to in order to actually receive that inheritance is live with his family for the next year or so. But you're basically trying to figure out why is Avery getting all this money from this man who she doesn't know, which is the most exciting part of this book. It's such a huge mystery. A big plus for me personally was that this book has really short chapters. And when a book has short chapters, I usually want to keep on reading and I read way more pages than when I read a book with long chapters. It's just my brain. I don't know how it works but apparently it worked this way. I loved getting to know this family in book one. Not so much in book two and three, but we'll get to that in a different video, like I said. And the puzzles, they all felt really clever. And this book really kept my attention and kept me engaged. So book one in this series is great. Just don't continue on with it. The next one is my favorite murder mystery that I have read in a long time. And that is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. Wow, this was amazing. This was incredible. I bought this when I went to Yauk, the Young Adult Literature Convention in London because I was together with Jody looking in Waterstones at this book. And I think she also really wanted to pick up this book and she also read it this year. And she convinced me. <laughs> Six friends, one college reunion and one unsolved murder. So this is a murder mystery that's being told from like two different time points. So you have 10 years ago when all these friends who joined a sorority and lived in this huge house, they went to college 10 years ago and one of their members got killed and someone else in the friend group got accused of that murder. But did he really commit it? And the second time point is in the now at the reunion 10 years later and basically not everyone is ready to move on from this huge thing that happened to them in the past. And at the reunion, they're gonna find out who actually murdered that person. Every single chapter kind of like ended on a cliffhanger. And what I love the most about this book is that it is filled with just morally great characters. Every single character has their own flaws, which all makes them very human and very interesting. And I also really liked looking at the like sorority mentality, but it really captured that feeling of camaraderie and being part of this group at college whilst they were just kind of really bad and toxic for one another. And this book features a main character that is so unlikable. I would normally just like not want to read a book with a character as unlikable as this one. But for some reason, Ashley Winstead fascinated me with her characters. And when I read those last couple of pages, I literally got goosebumps. It was chilling. I'm just like looking through all the pages and like I quoted it. I wrote down my thoughts and opinions on this book. It was a great reading experience experience and I want to read more Ashley Winstead and if you're looking for an engaging thriller pick this one up. Then a series was introduced into my life. I'm currently reading the third book which when do I ever finish series? Um, the answer is almost never <laughs> so that tells you something and that is the Scythe trilogy by Neil Shusterman. I read Scythe in preparation for the Young Adult Literature Convention as well because this has been on my shelves for years. I am so happy I finally picked it up because this is amazing. It's been such a long time since I read a dystopian sci-fi novel. I honestly cannot remember the last time. Maybe it was like The Hunger Games. And this is one of my new favorites. So as the series continues on though, it gets a little less amazing. I do have to be honest about that. Like I'm almost finished with book three and I'm kind of questioning like, why are we following so many different characters? Where is the story going? It feels a bit pointless. That sounds a bit harsh to say, but it is a bit of the truth. Thunderhead was also really, really amazing. Only again, towards the end, I felt a bit confused about where the story was going, but I feel like it's a solid sequel to Scythe, which is my favorite book in this trilogy. I've talked about this book numerous times on my channel, so I'm so sorry if you're getting tired of it. Please skip on towards the next favorite read. We follow Citra and Rowan, and they are becoming apprentice sides. And you might wonder, what are sides? Well, actually in this world in which we follow these characters, everything's perfect. People don't die. The population is Magnifique. <laughs> However, to make sure that the world is not overpopulated, you have sides who do actually kill people. So Citra and Rowan become apprentice 
sides, but only one of them can actually become one. And the one who does will have to glean, AKA kill the other. And you basically just learn how corrupt the scythe world is, but you also learn how it works, which I thought was the most unique and interesting part of this book. How the hell did Neil Schusterman come up with this world? Mind is blown, literally. It also creates these super interesting situations in which like your grandma can have children, which are then your aunts and uncles, but they're younger than you. You have people who are like thrill seekers and kind of kill themselves for fun. Um, they cannot die, so they don't really kill themselves. And people like turn corners, which means that if they hit a certain age, they kind of like reset their appearance to their younger selves. But people can become like over hundreds of years old. And the sides have their own like political system as well. If I haven't convinced you with how interesting this book is, please go pick it up because it's just so fascinating. And this book has so many twists and turns and people die and it's very violent actually. And I'm gonna guess that they have probably sold like TV rights or something because it would not surprise me at all if you see this series being turned into a TV show or a movie series in the next couple of years. Okay, we are getting to my top five reads of the year and they are not really in any particular order because they can be sorted into two different authors. So let's start with book number five and four, I guess on this list. And that is Stay Another Day and Clean by Juno Dawson, especially Clean. This is my favorite read of the two. If you have been present on my channel for a little while, you know that I am obsessed with Juno Dawson. She's one of my favorite authors and she just writes such amazing raw contemporaries, especially if you cannot tell from the title and the look of this book. So Stay Another Day, as you can kind of tell, is a Christmassy, wintry read. And I just finished reading this on the day of Christmas Eve. Am I correct? I read it around Christmas times. So let's just keep it at that. You follow these three siblings, Fern, Rowan, and Willow, and they all have their own personal issues. Willow, the youngest, has an eating disorder. That's definitely like being explored, her recovery, her falling back into her old patterns. And um, especially during Christmas times, I feel like a lot of people says eating disorders get triggered. Then we have Rowan, who is very confident in his sexuality, but he is not so confident with his like trust and commitment issues. And then we have the eldest sister, which is Fern. She basically wants everything to go her way or it's no way. And there is this like huge secret that's being revealed this Christmas. It's a family drama. It's entertaining. It's challenging. It's insightful. It's inspiring. It's all those things and more. And then we have Clean, which is my absolute fave, in which we follow socialite Lexi Volkov. She almost overdoses. She thinks she's hit rock bottom and then she's being sent away to this rehab somewhere on the countryside in the UK. And it says here, from there, the only way is up for Lexi and her fellow inmates, including the mysterious Brady. As she faces her demons, Lexi realizes love is the most powerful drug of all. This is not a beautiful story. It is ugly. You will hate the characters, especially the main character, but it's them going through addiction, which is a very intense and raw theme to read about. I don't know. I just always feel impressed by Juno Dawson's skill to actually write characters that you will probably hate and want to just like shake them by the shoulders and like scream at their faces. Like, why are you doing this to yourself, to the people around you? Why are you doing this to me reading this book? But you'll be thanking Juno Dawson afterwards because her stories, they just leave such a big impact on you. But my biggest advice before you pick up one of her books, please go read the trigger warnings before getting into them because yeah, there's a lot of them. But once you've read a Juno Dawson book, you will probably thank me later because they're amazing. And then going from extremely raw contemporaries to my top three books of this year, which are rather emotional sometimes still, but overall they bring me so much joy. And it is no surprise that I'm talking about Emily Henry. <laughs> when I see these books, I just feel happy, which is a feeling that I am always in search of. I think the way that I would order my enjoyment of these books would be Book Lovers on number three, You and Me on Vacation on number two, and my absolute number one read of this year is Beach Read. I never thought I was a romance reader until I read Emily Henry, and oh boy, was I wrong. I need romances with lots of character development and no insta-love. <laughs> Which I feel, whenever I say that, I mean, you know that the 
characters, like the love interests are gonna end up together. But because Emily Henry's romances, they go through so much growth and their characters are actually adults who want to learn from one another, who listen, who overall communicate. That's just so refreshing and it feels so nice to read about it. Do I need to tell you what these books are about? These are basically two workaholics who are kind of enemies. I feel like that's a bit too harsh to say. It's like a grumpy ix grumpy romance. It takes place in this super cute summery town. You have a magical little bookshop. You also explore a sister sister relationship. Yes. I really like book lovers. Then you have You and Me on Vacation, which is a friends to lovers romance, but something big happened in between as well. And you're trying to figure that out. And these two friends always spend the summers together. So you kind of like follow their whole relationship throughout these travels that they've done together. And then my number one is Beach Read because this just has <laughs> a little bit of like a sentimental value for me as well. Last year in April, I was doing so bad mentally. I wasn't able to read any books because of my mental health, which is a uh, reoccurring situation at the moment. But when I read Beach Read, my gosh, all I wanted to do was just read a damn book. And it had been such a long time since I felt that way. So we follow these two writers who are also like enemies from one another. They are both best-selling authors. However, they are currently just like in the biggest writer's block ever. So they both actually separately decide from each other that they want to go to these like cabins by the lake and go on like a little writing spree situation. They recognize one another they know that they don't like each other and they kind of like make a pact that they will write in each other's genres to kind of like switch it up see if they can get out of this slump and they slowly start to notice each other a bit more and fall for one another. Yes, as you can tell, I'm just obsessed. I cannot wait for Emily Henry's new release in April. I so desperately want to receive an arc but will the publisher give me one? I don't think so. <laughs> I will literally do anything to get an arc of happy place. I just, I need, I need to have it. But yeah, in my opinion, these books absolutely deserve the hype. They brought me so much joy. So these were, oh, I wanna grab the pile. These were <laughs> the best books that I read in 2022. Let me know in the comments down below if any of the titles that I mentioned today are actually also in your top reads of the past year. And now I am um, excited to rant about my worst reads of 2022 in my next video. So I will see you all then. Bye. <laughs>